actually didn't win a Grammy last night. No. Did you, did you watch it? I did. Sure? I was on the bus. Oh, you also know you I was actually at church. Okay. Yeah. Are you uh, are you sad you didn't win? Or? No, no, I'm not sad. Because you're still in your, uh, you're just starting your career, so it will happen later. Well, you know, yes, it's very early, and when I was nominated, um, I really wasn't quite, I didn't really break yet in the United States. And listen, you can't be mad if you lose to Daft Punk, it's like... No, no, of course not, no. Great I'd rather lose to them than anyone else. <laughs> no, that's good, that's good. Because my question. I'm a winner, I feel like a winner every day. Yeah, so you don't have to win a Grammy. <laughs> hey, before you recorded this album, eh, you you wrote songs for other people. Yeah. Uh, how does it be? How it was it sort of simultaneous. It was simultaneous. Yeah. Okay. So how did you choose? Often I would get this song to Brittany and get this song for myself. Yeah. Well, Brittany <laughs> said she wanted the song, so I gave it to her. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't uh, you didn't have to get your darlings to her, so. Well, you know, it just depends on how you look at things. It's like. I think some artists are quite um, like narcissistic about their records and they want to keep everything for themselves and I was really confident in the music that was already on the album and I was more honored than anything that she was taken to one of the records I'd written so it's like amazing you know yeah. okay. why not yeah she just told me that you were um, if you write songs you do the whole visual aspect, aspect yeah. of the song with it so you do, do a video or yeah. uh, um, is it, can we expect like a Michael Jackson bad album? Every video, every, every song has a music video. Maybe a video. Yeah. <laughs> no. Do you do you see something? I like do a that lot of music future? videos. Yeah. I do a lot of visual things, and I something that I am quite like aware of is that right now all over the world, the pop audience is used to receiving things in a certain format. It's like single radio play album sales, video, more sales, new single, right? So it's like we're sort of um, fed music in a very particular way. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, you know, especially now um, in a time where, you know, the economy is really not doing so well, uh, it's important to put as much music and art and joy out as we can. So I just put it out all the time. Mm -hmm. So fun, the fun part is really important for you then. Yeah. It's just like, it doesn't have to be so regimented and like, perfect. I think that uh, people buy records if they like the music. It's all mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. It's not like, I don't have to trick anyone to buy an album, does that make sense? Okay. Now you, you, but you don't see a video, for example, but buying other things, you, you see something as a trick to buy the album, or how do you see it? No, I, I look at it as part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, all of my favorite artists in history were incredible at making videos and films and stage performances. So I just apply that same sort of philosophy to what I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. You talk about that, those kind of art artists. It's like uh, you, you really have those artists in the 80s, like Prince, for example. Prince, uh, David Bowie, Grace yeah, Jones, yeah. They all did this thing. Jackson. Yeah. Is it, is it something um, which you would rather have lived in that area or era, sorry. I imagine if I was around during that era, I would have been like David Bowie's girlfriend as opposed <laughs> to a pop star. <laughs> but um, I guess the way that you that I like to think of it is um, when I watch their videos, it's so obviously coming from them. Mm -hmm. It's the lifestyle and the culture saturated and seeping through every like grain of the music yeah. and the artist. It's not two separate things. No. And that's really important for you to have that as well. Yeah, everything you see comes from me. Yeah. It's not like, you know. Yeah. You, you were born in 86, right? So yeah. you grew up in the 90s, actually. Yeah, I love the 90s. were amazing. Yeah? What, what did you like about the 90s then? Grunge. <laughs> um, Keith Haring. Mm -hmm. Um Ghetto Blaster. Just more 80s, right? Well, I don't know, early yeah. 90s. Okay. I think. Yeah. But grunge was really like... Uh, grunge was early 90s. Yeah, it was 90s, yeah. yeah. It was really not really fun music then. I thought Nirvana and Faith No More was fun. Yeah? But... Okay, yeah. 
my that, I'm just that kind <laughs> of girl, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like rock stars with with good uh, tight pants and uh, and long hair. Yeah. And she also said this is your like your regular outfit, the most casual you can get. When oh, you this is you pretty casual yeah? for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And when you're on stage, like how many dresses do you wear in one night? We do one costume change, so two different outfits. Oh, okay. On stage. So that's not that much. Thirty minutes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't want to leave the stage for too long. Yeah. Also, um, saw so you really like to dress, um, like put uh, not too many clothes on. Is, is it uh, easier for you than to move your, move around or? I don't think that I really dress that that different from other female pop artists. I, the aesthetic is different, mm -hmm. but I think that the amount of clothing I wear is relative. I think that people just think I look more naked. Yeah. Yeah, for the, for the, you know Royce and Murphy? Yes, I know Royce and Murphy. Yeah, she, she, she always puts these, like, these big things on and she really walks around like that. Yeah. Well, you really strip it down, right? Well, I do now more. Last time I was in Amsterdam, I was covered from head to toe. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, there's nothing you... you no, there's no it's just that. What, I, what I choose to wear. Yeah. I am who I am. Okay. And aren't you, aren't you afraid that uh, when you also put so much effort into your videos and into your clothing that it takes the uh, uh, focus away from your music? No. no? You're not afraid of that? No, no we've sold a lot of albums in mm -hmm. about a month and a half. Yeah, okay. So I think it's helping. It's helping, I yeah. think it's, if anything, the complete opposite. I think that the focus is more on the music and that people approach me as a real artist and not just as a pretty blonde girl with a couple hit records. <laughs> no, okay. That's good. Uh, let me see. What else do you want to see? Oh yeah, of course your name. You, you took that from the, the Queen song. Radio Gaga. Radio Gaga. That's of course a very nostalgic song. Yeah. Yeah, are you are you a nostalgic person? Or? Very nostalgic yeah? person. Can you give me that Oh example? my gosh. Yeah? <laughs> well, you know, what I long for, truthfully, is the um, re-emergence of uh, the 70s and a lifestyle of art and fashion and obsession with pop culture mm -hmm. um, and vanity that's okay. Yeah. Not um, vanity and fame as this incredibly poisonous, disgusting um, monster but looking at pop culture in the way that they used to look at it in which it was it was art it was mm. beautiful yeah where did the fascination come from when did it when did it's it from start? New York yeah New York is all over New the York. place yeah. yeah well in New York City and it's the reason I call the album the same is that fame isn't decided by paparazzi and, and celebrities American uh, New York journalists are entirely too worried about uh, much more worried about uh, business and and stock market and and world issues. There's mm -hmm. not a tremendous amount of celebrity paparazzi in New York City. The fame that we share is completely on our own. It's like um, we've got no money. And we've got no no cameras following us, and no rich dads or um, really well known family names. We just have our passion for our work, mm -hmm. and when we walk down the street, people don't know who we are, but they want to know who we are. Okay, All right. So we've got no money, but we're beautiful and dirty rich. <laughs> okay. And last time you were in Amsterdam, you visited the red light district. Yeah. What did you get from there? I actually oh interviewed a prostitute mm -hmm. and filmed it. Okay. Yeah. Why did you want to do that? Because it wasn't allowed. It wasn't allowed? No, it's like a very illegal thing, like, kind of like a no-no to bring a camera to that area of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, the women are so strong and I'm quite intimidated, actually, by their strength just walking through the streets. It's like a tremendous amount of sexual strength. Yeah. So um, I went from door to door until I finally convinced one woman to allow me to interview her and film it, as okay. long as I can feel her identity. Okay, yeah. What, 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 do you, what are you going to do with the film? I'm going to make an art piece. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm never going to use it. I want to really protect your identity, so it's like I'm not going to use it on YouTube and that kind of crap. No, no. Okay. I'm going to do it um, as an exhibit in my live show in America. Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely. Cool. Let me see. Oh, yeah. I, I read in, I think it was a fairly old interview with you, I think two years ago or something like that, that you think music nowadays is lazy. It is lazy. Yeah, and which you, you in that interview didn't re really elaborate on that. So I wanted to ask you more about that. What do you think? That well, l if we were to transport ourselves into like 1978 and watch live performances, whether they be on television or live, or the fashion that um, you know the glam rock community was mm -hmm. sporting, it's like. Granted, that was one genre of music, but I just think that there was a much greater attention to um, self-expression and and um, lifestyle in music, a real genuine image and mm -hmm. sentiment and feeling, and not just, oh, we're rich rock stars and um, we get a ton of free clothes that we wear on stage, and I've got people that do everything for me. It's mm -hmm. like... David Bowie so clearly spent endless sleepless hours planning each and every performance yeah. and outfit and the the um uh, the gradient of eyeshadow that he wore was carefully picked out. It's like mm -hmm. yeah. there was such a tremendous love for like such small things, details. Mm -hmm. And I feel like music today you you see a lot of rock bands or, you know, anyone just in jeans and t-shirts who don't brush their hair. It's like, yeah. fuck music, fuck corporation, I'm a star. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to show up for my interviews and fuck this and yeah. I'm going to wear sneakers to the Grammys and whatever. It's like, it's bullshit. Yeah. I'm nostalgic for a time when uh, people treated music and the industry with a sense of um, prestige mm -hmm. and and honor and and love. Yeah. Why do you think that that has changed then? What, what's your view on that? I think it has a lot to do with the attitude of of young people. Um, for a while, it became cool to um, rebel against mm -hmm. the machine. Yeah. It's a very sort of punk idea but without all of the style yeah 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 that okay punk, yeah that punks have punk used to uh, have a lot of style yeah. yeah yeah i mean yeah. look at um whether or not you consider debbie harry punk it's you know it's up to you but the ramones bit, yeah. it's like yeah. the ramones had a tremendous amount of style yeah. Yeah. so being a punk is um a well thought out rebellion mm -hmm. it's yeah. not careless no no no, no. it isn't is it also maybe because there's a lot of uh, much more music nowadays that you can get your hands on? It's really everywhere. The people, some of the there's always been a lot of music that's mm -hmm. everywhere. I think that the real problem is not with the internet. I think the problem is with the artists and and record labels not signing real artists and hoping and banking on the fact that they're going to be able to recreate one of these completely incredibly money mm -hmm. money pumping plastic pop artists yeah, from the yeah. 90s and the truth is that there was a genuine magic to that time yeah. that can't be recreated mm -hmm. and you just got to bank on real artistry and real music yeah. and um, you know also not sign bands that are more concerned with going out and getting wasted and enjoying their fame as opposed to going to bed early like Led Zeppelin did yeah. and making sure that Robert Plant was wide-eyed and bushy-tailed to hit those high notes in the morning. It's like, <laughs> it's yeah. just a different time. Yeah. yeah. Michael Jackson wasn't like wasted in an alleyway. No. no he no, was no. practicing in the mirror for hours. Mm -hmm. So this, that's why you don't like those the programs like Idols, for example. I, I, I don't have a problem with those shows. No. That was there was something that I said that was twisted quite profusely in the media and in oh, okay. the UK. Oh, just, I just yeah, no, not, it's like I I don't have a problem with those shows. I would not. Pers I don't personally relate to the 
that com- that trajectory of creativity, mm-hmm. I needed to suffer and die and yeah, yeah, and yeah, imagine yeah. that I was Edie Sedwick for five years before I made anything brilliant. Yeah, the old school way. The old school way, but yeah. that's just my personal choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm all with them. So. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, I don't no. judge the way that other people make news. No, of course not. No. Okay. Cool. I think I think I'm about to finish this. One. Yeah. Everything I wanted. Oh <laughs> wow, that's great. <laughs> well thank you so much. I just yeah. talk really fast. Yeah, that's it probably, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Well thanks very much. Thank you, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. When are you coming back for uh, solo shows here in Um, I will be back. April, June, July, sometime this month soon, very much. Oh okay, cool. Yeah. We're nice to see you in a little club here in Amsterdam, yeah. Like and that. that. No or something. I'd like you to see me here, actually. Yeah, I, I can't come tonight. Actually. Why? I have a sick girlfriend at home. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we already tried. We tried to get up to bed. Yeah. You should stay. It would change the way you think of everything. <laughs> it would change the